Hi, my name is Mauricio Hezenge, and today I'm going to talk about the multi-parent bias random key genetic algorithm with implicit path linking and its real-world applications. Uh, this is joint work with Carlos Andage of at and Labs Research, Rodrigo Tozo of Microsoft, and José Gonçalves of Amazon and University of Porto. So here's a summary of the talk. I begin by briefly going over uh, bias random key genetic algorithms and path relinking, and then show how to embed path relinking within a bias random key genetic algorithm, what we call an implicit path relinking. We give some applications and make some concluding remarks. So the, the topic of this talk is covered in this paper, which was published earlier this year in eJOR. A good reference for bias random key genetic algorithms is a tutorial I wrote with Jose Gonzalez uh, and published in Journal of Heuristics about 10 years ago. A tech report version of this paper can be downloaded from my personal website. So let's talk about encoding with random keys. So a random key is a real random number in the continuous interval zero, one. A vector X of random keys or simply random keys is an array of N random keys. Turns out that solutions of optimization problems can be encoded by random keys. And a decoder is a deterministic algorithm that takes a vector of random keys as input and outputs a vector, a feasible solution of the optimization problem. Random keys and genetic algorithms were introduced uh, by Bean in 1994 for sequencing problems. Individuals are strings of real valued numbers or random keys in interval zero one. Uh, sorting random keys results in a sequencing order uh, as a given to the right. Mating is done using parameterized uniform crossover. So we're given two parents and we want to produce a child and we produce the child by flipping a bias coin, uh, which decides which key the child inherits. So heads, tails, tails, heads, heads. And now I have a child as a result of mating the two parents. Uh, now if every random key array corresponds to a feasible solution, this type of mating always, always produces a feasible offspring. So the algorithm begins by, uh, with an initial population made up of P random key vectors, each with N keys each having a value generated uniformly at random in interval zero one. Uh, at the kth generation, we compute the cost of each solution and then partition the solution set into two sets, a, an elite set and a non-elite set. The elite set should be the smaller of the two sets and contain the best solutions. Now, as we uh, produce population K plus one, um, we, we copy without modification all elite solutions for population K. Then we introduce into population K plus one, a set of mutants. And then we complete the population by combining, by mating parents from population K and, and inserting the resulting children in population K plus one. So a bias random key genetic algorithm is also a random key genetic algorithm of the bean type. Uh, BRKGA and RKGA differ in how mates are chosen for crossover and how parameterized uniform crossover is applied. So in bean's algorithm, both parents were chosen at random from the entire population. Whereas in a bias random key genetic algorithm, both parents are chosen at random, but one parent is chosen from the population of elite solutions. In Bean's algorithm, either parent can be parent A in the parameterized uniform cursor. It is the parent that corresponds to the, to the, the, the higher probability in passing along its gene. Whereas in a bias random key genetic algorithm, the best fit parent is parent A. 
So in the bi in a bias random key generic algorithm, you'd pick one parent from the elite set, one parent from the non-elite set, and then flip a coin which has a probability greater than 0.5 of the child inheriting the key of the elite parent. So from a, a overall look at the algorithm, uh, you can basically uh, works as follows. We generate P vectors of random keys to start things off. We decode each of these vectors and we test for some stopping rule. Uh, we then sort the solutions by their costs. We classify solutions as being elite or non-elite. And then we build the next generation by simply copying elite solutions to the next population, generating mutants in the next population and combining elite and non-elite solutions from the previous generation uh, to produce children which are added to the next population. And then we're back to this, to the decoding phase. Now, as you can see, uh, this, this entire component uh, that's in black is problem independent. Okay, no matter what problem you're solving, you do the same computations. And the only thing that depends on the problem is the decoding uh, component. So to specify a bias random key genetic algorithm, one, uh, one, does, one does encoding always the same way. So it's with a vector of n random keys where the parameter n has to be specified. And the decoder takes as input a vector of n random keys and outputs the corresponding solution of the combinator optimization problem and its cost. And this is usually a heuristic. So we also have to define parameters and these are size of the population, size of the elite set, size of the mutant set, probability that the child inherits the key of the elite parent, and uh, some stopping criteria. Okay, now path relinking. Um, suppose you have two good solutions, solution, good solution one and good solution two. Uh, turns out that good solutions often have common elements. And what path relinking does is it explores solutions spanned by pairs of good solutions. So here we have two good solutions and there are four solutions that are spanned by those two solutions. So let's give a more concrete example. Suppose we have two solutions uh, represented by red and black dots. Um, how does path linking work? From this solution on the left, we introduce an element uh, that's present in the solution on the right, but not on the left. So the, the third red uh, ball can be introduced here, the fourth red ball introduced here, and the last black ball can be introduced here. And likewise, if you look the other way, uh, we can introduce the, th the, the black ball in the third position here, and the black ball in the fourth position there, and the red ball in the last position there. And now from uh, one of these uh, solutions, uh, you can introduce the second element, which is different. Uh, so we had introduced the red, we had introduced the, the red ball and now we, and now we can introduce uh, the next black ball and we get the solution. And then likewise, if we introduce uh, the, the red ball, we get the fourth red ball, we get the solution here. And this solution is, is one move away from that solution. Likewise, with this solution, one move away. Right here, we just, we just introduce uh, the red here, and here we introduce the black here. And likewise, we can, we can see uh, moves that connect solutions. And by doing that, we can, we can examine a, uh, a path. So here's, here's one path, here's another path, here's another path that connects these two solutions. Here's another path and another path. And in total, we have six paths, three factorial. And you see it grows exponential the number of paths with the, with the symmetric difference. So path relinking, the main idea in path relinking is uh, 
is to traverse the path in the solution space from solution S, which we call the initial solution, to solution T, which we call the guiding solution. And we evaluate each solution in the path and return the best solution. Now, we don't want to evaluate all the paths because there's exponentially many of them. Uh, so one way to reduce the number of paths is just to choose the path greedily. So suppose we start on the left here, uh, and we, we've, we've uh, put the cost of the solution uh, next to the box. Uh, and uh, what we can see here is that uh, if we go here through, we're minimizing, we want to move to an improving solution, either two or two, we could choose to go to the solution here. And then from here, we can go either to three or to one, and the greedy solution would be to go to one, right? And then from one, we're we're right we're already connected to the next to the, to to a solution T. So now S and T are now relinked. Okay, now we can evaluate the solutions in this path. So three, two, one, and two, and we return the best solution found, which is one. That's the idea of path relinking. Uh, the length of the path is the set of attributes in T in the target that are not present in S. So we call that uh, delta ST. And so the length of the path from S to T is just the cardinality of the set, right? Because at each iteration, we introduce one element. And so we'll produce a path of exactly that size. Uh, so here we have the we have three elements, right? These one, two, three are not present here. Uh, so we have three elements, and so the length of the path is path is three. So there are many types of path relinking. Among them, they can be categorized as in being internal or external. Uh, in internal, we have a one way where we go from S to T, back and forth, where we go from S to T, and then back from T to S. Uh, mix where we begin. At each, at each end and meet in the middle. Greedy randomized adaptive path relinking, where instead of taking a greedy choice, you do a greedy randomized choice. Uh, truncated, you, you don't examine everything uh, in the path. And evolutionary uh, is something that we can do also. Now, uh, how can we add path relinking to local search? So if you have algorithms like RASP, uh, verbal neighborhood search, iterated local search, taboo search, simulated, and then we'll visit a sequence of local optimal during its run. Um, some of these local optima are high quality or near optimal, others are low quality or far from optimal. So path linking should be applied between uh, solutions S and T, where at least one is of high quality. So solutions should not be too similar because then the path will be too small. Uh, so there should be a minimum threshold for, for longer paths. And they make use of an elite set. So an elite set is a set of diverse high quality solutions visited by the algorithm. An elite set should have a maximum size, let's say 10 or 20 solutions. And, uh, as you build the elite set, if the size of the elite set is less than K, then we insert a solution into the elite set if it's sufficiently different from all other elite solutions. And if it's already full, so if the size is already K, we insert the solution into, uh, into the elite set if it's better than the worst solution in the elite set, and it's sufficiently different from other solutions in the elite set. And when that happens, we have to replace the the, we have to replace with us the elite solution most similar to us among those that are worse than us. And, and now how do we, how do we uh, use path relinking within a bias random key genetic algorithm? Recall that the BRKGA involves a population of vectors of random keys, each of which encodes a solution. Now, each vector of random keys is decoded into a solution to the optimization problem. Now, implicit path relinking is done between vectors of random keys. That is, it's not problem dependent, it's problem independent. So for example, uh, suppose we have uh, 
this base solution and this guide solution, uh, we insert into the base solution elements of the guide solution not present in the base solution. So we insert the point eight, the point four, and the point two, the point six, and the point one. And that, and this way we make n calls to the decoder. Now at this point, again, we, we introduce, we have already introduced the point six here, but we introduce the point eight, point four, point two, and point one. And here again, we make uh, n calls to the decoder. So overall, we're gonna make n squared, order n squared calls to the decoder, which can be expensive if decoding is expensive. So, uh, so for each key in the base solution, the procedure has to find the best replacement key from the guide solution. Uh, excessive this, there's excessive focus on intensification and there's not enough on diversification. So uh, another thing is that a hidden structure uh, should be able to appear, should be expected to appear in the vectors of random keys throughout the evolutionary process. And certain portions of the random key vectors can become essential building blocks for high quality solutions. And tearing this, these blocks apart when combining with other solutions can destroy the high quality solutions. So we propose an approach that exchanges blocks of keys rather than a single key. And the number of uh, blocks depends on the block size and the length of the path. So here we have three blocks. And what we do is we insert uh, here uh, each block. So I insert the first block, the second block, and the third block. And then here again, I insert uh, first block and the last block. And, and, and here we have then instead of n calls to the decoder, we have nb number of blocks calls to the decoder. So it's fewer calls and, uh, and, and, and should be much faster. So how do we incorporate this within a BRKJ? If we're running a single population BRKJ, uh, we do the implicit path for linking between a pair of elite solutions. On the other hand, if we're running this as an island model where we have several populations being evolved simultaneously, then we do path relinking between a pair of elite solutions, one from each elite set on the pair of, on, on, on pairs of islands. So island one with island, with island uh, two, island two with island three, island one with island three. Okay, how do we select solutions uh, to do path relinking, well, we pick the first solution at random with probability proportional to its cost for maximizing or inverse, inversely for minimizing. And we pick a second at random with probability proportional to its cost, but restricted to be sufficiently different from the first solution. Uh, we replace a solution most similar to uh, the path relinking solution having worse costs by the, uh, the the path linking solution, similar to regular. So we've we've produced a framework which we distribute in software uh, in, for this uh, here KGA and P, P, IPR framework in C++, in Julia, and in Python. And this framework is available uh, under a license, under a BSD-like license. So there. This has been applied to a number of problems. In this paper, we apply it to wireless backhaul network design, firmware over the air scheduling, and window determination and combinatorial auctions. In other papers, it's been applied to home health care and root sequence index problem. So path linking is a very effective strategy and improves solution quality, reduces computational time. BRKJ is an effective algorithm for component optimization where solutions are encoded as vector random keys. Most components of the algorithm are problem independent and decoder is the only problem dependent component. Path relinking BRKJ can be hybridized leading to a meta heuristic that is more effective than either path relinking or BRKJ alone. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>